like all of us. All right. Just uh, real quick, injury-wise, yeah. Co- uh, where do things stand, I guess, with Kento Sheffield and as far as Brandon Copeland goes? Yeah, I mean, we'll just reassess. We come back over the weekend. Um, you know, there's a lot of different mechanisms you can use now with the short-term IR, which we put Josh Andrews on, but we'll just we'll just monitor those uh, situations over the weekend. Uh, what's Kendo's situation? What's that? Kendo's situation. Sheffield, yeah. same thing. It's been going on for a while. Um, it's been relatively minor, but it's uh, it's been taking some time right now. But he he should be getting close. You said at the beginning of training camp that uh, they need to be Mariners. Uh, would depend, position would depend on how well he could play in coverage. How do you assess him in that regard? His growth in that regard now? Yeah, we think Tui's done a nice job. Um, so he's had the opportunity. He's gone out there and proved it, and we're pretty excited about Tui. The role he'll have on this defense. Yeah, it's part of the reason we signed him. Uh, guys like him and, and Eric Harris and Duran Harmon. Uh, you got to sign the right guys. Uh, they obviously still got to be able to contribute, which they all can. And they're great teammates. And, and you want to bring the right guys in here in free agency. And uh, you know, Lee's a guy I've admired from afar for a long time. Uh, you know, a couple times over my career, we talked about bringing him in, and other teams have signed him. And so he's got a great reputation. Uh, teammates love him. And uh, he's a good player, good, good at the role we ask him to do. This might be a, this is a very technical question, I guess, but with the short term IR situation, because you put Josh on it today, is he technically then eligible? Like, does this week count as a week? I guess is the, mm-hmm. the question where like, he would maybe be eligible on that week three instead of week four. Well, the biggest assessment with him will be you know, how quickly he heals. And I don't want to put a timeline on it. Um, so as you go into the, you know, the regular season, week one, and then. Uh, it is, it is kind of nice. I'm glad that that's one thing that's kind of evolved in the last couple of years is where, you know, it's just be a lot harder. You know, a guy has it, you know, you may have to carry an extra guy on the 53. And then, you know, that could affect a lot of other, there's a ripple effect to it. So it is kind of nice. You get a roster spot back. Um, it's not like we're sitting there trying to hide something. It was unfortunate. It was a freak thing that happened. And so now it's, it's a job for these other guys to step up. It's a big opportunity for Jalen Mayfield. You, you had said Sunday. Going to look at the way of the wire, especially sure. when it comes to quarterbacks. At this point, now that things have kind of settled in right. a bit, are you comfortable with with Josh and Felipe? Yeah, yeah, we are. I mean, again, I'll never say we won't make another move because right. uh, we'll always look and we'll see what what you know, what comes up, and that's at every position. Um, but so far, you know, we we feel pretty good about where we're at with those guys. And Coach, uh, with Josh breaking his hand, uh, you know, Jalen. Yeah, it's huge, Eli. Um, you know, you can't anticipate everything, but that was part of our strategy. And so we feel better about where Jalen's at right now. If we had gone on there, and again, there's, 30, there's not a perfect way to do it. And I, I don't want to sound out here like I'm rationalizing and making excuses for this or that, but it was part of the strategy to get these young guys ready to go because we expect them to have to contribute at some point. And this is life in the NFL. It's why we mixed and matched. And some of it was out of necessity with Caleb starting camp on Pup and getting guys in here and cross-training guys. And it's unfortunate what happened to Josh. Josh had a good camp. And we still think he'll come back and contribute this season. But now it's an opportunity. And here we go. So Jalen, you know, he needs to be ready to go. Um, you know, there could be somebody else. I mean, like I said, that's where you continue to monitor the waiver wire and you continue to, you know, are some of the other guys we've got, some of the guys that we, you know, may have on practice squad or, or, or Dahlman or whoever. But, um, but d that's why we did what we did. It got him a lot of experience, and we got to get ready to go. And I watched last year how y'all handled Nate Davis from uh, Charlotte. Yes. A small school guy, but I think he did start like week three or four, if I'm correct. Yeah, he actually played his first snaps here in Atlanta, Atlanta yeah, and we came here. Mm-hmm. And then he um, then took over that, that guard spot, and and we kind of we went from there. So, yeah, there's all situations, and that one's a little bit different. Um, you know, Nate was in a little bit different situation because he had an injury in camp. Oh, okay. And, 
you know, he was a little bit. So, I mean, they're all, they're never two situations alike, but yeah, you lean on those experiences and how to bring rookies along. And, you know, as I said, I mean, you're, everybody's trying to, to prepare to get these guys ready to go. And we know we got an extra week this year in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Was that partially because of some of the injuries and some of the other, and maybe even the three quarterback situation versus something else, or was it? Well, or yeah. Did you only have three up on game day? Or? Well, it just it depends. I mean, it's it depends what you want to do. Uh, it definitely has to do with game day. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it now because you're able to flex some guys and and you're you know you're trying to prepare for this move. So if this happens, you know you have a little bit of flexibility in the roster. Uh, you know, because it's not finalized, it's still fluid. I'd imagine it would. There's a couple more moves we could possibly make over the next couple of days. I uh, can't guarantee anything, but that's that's a little bit of strategy behind it that way. But then we get down to next week, you know who you want to put up, and it, it's kind of nice having those flex spots, especially early in the year when you're trying to figure it out because that is a big factor. And a big factor is going to be how much of those guys, whether it's third running back or fourth tight end, how are they going to contribute on game day? And those are decisions we got to make at the end of next week. How smoothly did the whole operation go? Uh, you know. I know they, Terry said they started last Thursday and then y'all get to the cuts and, uh, you know, monitoring the waivers. And, sure. You know, how smoothly does that go with you and Terry working together? Very, uh, very smooth. Push? Yeah. No, oh, it's, uh, like I said, out. You know, yeah. No, it's, uh, like I said, we've been, Terry and I have been working uh, hand in hand since January. And that's the, that's what we were hired here to do. Um, feel very fortunate to be working some, with somebody like Terry. Uh, you know, he's become a great friend in a, in a short period of time and a great coworker. And when you have those kind of relationships, it's able you're able to be honest. And neither one of us have big egos. We just want to do what's best for the Falcons and do a good job of the job we're hired to do. And we, we both have really good staffs, and it's a, it's a collaborative effort. And there's conversations. We have several conversations every day, all day. So I joke I've talked with Terry and spent more time with him than probably I have with my family. Sad, it may be sad, but true. Um, but uh, in the first, you know, year ones are always uh, busy, and, and as we were waiting our families to move, that was part of it too. It wasn't like because I love my family, and so does them, but or so does he. But um, so yeah, it was very smooth, D-Lud, very smooth. I'm guessing you guys agree on all fifty-three, like where it was like, or you know, so like what happens when there is maybe some level of disagreement? Yeah, sometimes. Look, if you're, you know, it's a, that's why I said egos get in the way a lot of times in business. Like you know, if you don't want to back yourself in a corner and. You know, you, you talk things things out. Okay, this, well, it, what about this? This, you know, we go back and forth. And there's a lot of other people in the room. And uh, like I said, we don't have huge egos. And then ultimately, we got to make a decision for the team and stand with it. So it's not hard when you when you have trust and, and you know where people are coming from. And like I said, you drop your ego and you can, be, you can disagree. But at the end of the day, once you make a decision, we're moving forward. And that's, to me, what quality organizations or quality businesses when, that I've been around or been exposed to, that's what they do. This your first time. What is your philosophy on draft picks? Because some some teams have philosophies where, like, if it's a draft pick, you're basically going to get that. Yeah, year, like, and some teams don't. Sure. Yeah. Um, we felt good about those guys. Um, you know, obviously, right now, initially, all nine of those guys are on the 53. Uh, it doesn't mean they're on scholarship. If we felt they didn't, they didn't deserve to be on 53. It wouldn't be on 53. There's no mandate that says, hey, just because we drafted somebody, they have to be on your 53, and you're giving out scholarship, and they understand the consequence. You may miss out on, on keeping a guy that can help you win. Um, and, but then there's also a fine line of making sure you're not giving up on somebody too early. There's a lot of things to factor. So uh, just the way it worked out, the way our roster is currently constructed, they're on there, but it doesn't mean they're on scholarship for the year. Well, you know, the thing is, we actually get another spot now because you have to dress eight alignment as 48. So, and then you have 53, and then you got the floating 54th and 55th spot um, to look at it. Like, there's another way to look at it. So you have to dress eight now, which is which is different, which allows you, you know, in the past when most teams only dress seven, no alignment. Now you you could dress a center only because you get eight. In the past, that would have that could have that really hurt a lot of guys in that spot that needed to be multiple. Whether you're swing tackle, you know, you're a four-position player, or you're a guard that can pull the ball and play center, and so there's different strategies going with it now. Um, yeah, I mean, Frank, you asked for Frank and, Frank and Darren. Yeah, I mean, Frank's got Frank's taking a ton of reps 
Here, um, he's taking the mo most reps of any receiver in training camp. And now sometimes in the games, you know, he got a lot of work, you know, on special teams, and that's a big part of his development. And we anticipate he'll help us. I don't know if it'll be week one at some point, but if Frank continues on his the path that he's on, we feel, we feel like he'll help us at some point this season. If Jalen has to start um, against the Eagles, I guess he and Fletcher Cox at some point, are you with that? Yeah. At some point, you got to get baptized at some point. He led. So, and every week there's there's somebody. That, that's the NFL. You know, that's what, that's why I like preseason can create a lot of false narratives. Uh, we always joke with Dave Ragone. I think he claims we need to fact check this. He claims he had the, the highest quarterback rating in preseason ever. And he's been coaching a lot longer. He's been playing. And uh, so, there's going to be somebody every week, D led. And we got a work cut out for us. Uh, You talking about the Andy Levitri one? Uh, yeah, Levitri. Yeah, no, that worked out well for the Falcons. I was with Andy at the time. He was in, in Tennessee. Yeah, no, Andy had a good career here. Andy did a nice job. It was a good trade. Yeah, and Andy was a good player, a uh, good person too. Sure. I mean, if some, everything's on the table, you know, I, I, you know, that's part of the the business and the personnel side. Those guys talk all the time. It's very common. Take a lot of calls. Never say never. I mean, I think you always listen. I think most guys. Around the NFL, it's pretty standard operating procedure. You've got to listen. So if a deal comes through or an opportunity is available, you've got to consider it. All right. Anything else? Yesterday, Earl Patterson said you had the it factor. And uh, you really said, well, what kind of guy would want to play for someone like you? Um, is there, are there coaches that, that you admire that have helped you shape the way you approach the team and make you kind of have that it factor? And do you even know what your it factor is? No, I'm just myself. I've got. Flaws like just like everybody else, and I don't try to be anybody but myself. Uh, you know, make plenty of mistakes. I try to learn from, not try to repeat the same mistakes. But I'm, I don't feel like anything it or special. Uh, and you know, maybe CP's trying to grease me up to get the ball more. So you get to consider that too. So now there's a lot of I've been around a lot of good coaches. I really have, and you know, I don't want to leave anybody off. But the biggest, best advice, I, and I've always just tried to be is be myself. And that's that's all I ever try to do. I appreciate it. Right, appreciate Thank you.